Heron Connect, technology and world market leader in mechanized tunneling, has manufactured efficient and reliable tunnel boring machines for all ground conditions for over 30 years. For slurry shield machines, Heron Connect has now developed a new generation of multi-step separation plants that are optimally suited for mechanized tunnel excavations. A powerful separation plant forms the basis of a successful utilization of mix shields. An efficient separation process removes nearly all solid matters from the slurry. The geology determines whether and how much bentonite and other additives are added to the slurry circuit. The following computer animation shows the operation method of a Heron Connect HSP 2800 separation plant. Modern tunnel boring machines for multi-line tunnel routes can open up a 30 meter tunnel per day. The resulting large quantities of excavated material must continuously be removed. A powerful custom-made separation plant is the prerequisite of continuous and economic tunneling. The Heron Connect mix shields with a diameter of up to 15.43 meters excavated an average of up to 5,670 cubic meters solid matter per day. The soil is loosened with the cutting wheel and falls into the excavation chamber, which is filled completely with bentonite suspension. The bentonite suspension serves as a stabilizing and transport medium. The excavated material, which is mixed with the bentonite suspension, is pumped off through the suction line in the invert and conveyed to the separation plant. During the multi-step separation process, the soil is separated from the bentonite. The cleaned flushing medium is then fed into the slurry circuit and pumped back into the excavation chamber. Feed line and slurry line are extended during each advanced cycle. Flexible conduits on the gantry prevent that the lines must be decoupled and extended after each advanced cycle. Sliding blocks enable the conduits to compensate the advanced movement. When the end position is reached, the connecting carriage is disconnected and moved back to the start position. The resulting gap is filled with pipe extensions. The bentonite and the material it carries are conveyed through intermediate pumping stations to the tunnel entry where the slurry is fed into the separation plant. The flow energy of the slurry line is reduced in the slurry distribution. The suspension is then distributed to two lines and conveyed to the downstream separation stages. The cleaned bentonite is pumped back to the TBM via the blue feed line. Operating a separation plant requires further components. The storage tanks contain a supply of clean and unclean bentonite. They are used as a buffer for continuous operation. Bentonite supply silos and mixing systems guarantee a sufficient quantity of fresh suspension to allow for smooth tunneling. To further optimize the pump performance, decanter centrifuges can optionally be mounted downstream in order to separate microparticles as solid phase from the mobile phase. This allows to reduce wear and operating costs of the flushing and slurry circuit and to increase TBM performance. Belt conveyors transport the material of the separation plant and centrifuges to dumps. Trucks transport the material to waste disposal sites. Containers for job site management and staff and the geotechnical laboratory complete the job site infrastructure. The HSP 2800 separation plant has a modular design. The modules are pre-assembled in containers, allowing for quick assembly. The first level of the containers is aligned on a prepared foundation. During operation, these containers are used as bentonite collectors. 
cyclone feed pumps and screen underflow collectors are installed on level 2. Level 3 contains the pre-sieving and dewatering screen machines that are built as twin deck screens. The coarse and fine cyclone feed units are installed on level 4. Spacers between the machine containers ensure easy and service-friendly access to the individual modules. The slurry distribution is installed above the two center containers. Quick couplings connect the individual pipelines between the modules. A muffling enclosure of the system containers make the HSP suitable for use in urban areas. In a final step, conveyor belts installed below the discharge hoppers transport the separated material to the dump. The plant is now operational. The medium in the slurry line moves at a speed of about 4 meters per second. The flow impact entrains the excavated material over the entire cross-section. The separation process is shown with the help of the grain diagram. Solids between approximately 16 centimeters and 14 millimeters, which correspond to objects of handball to marble size, are removed in the coarse screen stage 1. Solids up to 3 millimeters are separated on screen level 2. This corresponds to fine gravel to match head size. The subsequent coarse cyclone stage removes particles up to 100 micrometers, which is the size of fine hourglass sand. The next fine cyclone stage removes particles up to 30 micrometers, which is the diameter of a hair. The remaining silt content is decanted in the centrifuges that are installed downstream in the partial current. The detailed view shows the first stage of the separation process. A scalping screen designed to handle maximum volumetric flow rates separates the larger particles. A high screen output obtained by a special screen design achieves a maximum volumetric flow and thus permits a maximum advanced movement of the TBM. As shown here, the separated segments are routed via the discharge chutes onto the belt conveyor. The screen dropout is collected in the first screen underflow trough from where it is sucked in by the coarse cyclone feed pumps. The pumps feed the first cyclone stage. The cyclones are fed in an off-center tangential direction. This produces a rotational flow that presses the heavier material to the outer wall, while the lighter phase remains in the intersection. In the section of the cyclone underflow, air is sucked in through a natural vacuum line that is installed at the upper cyclone flow. This produces a rotational flow that entrains the inner mobile phase, blue in the figure. This in turn generates a vacuum in the cyclone chamber and eventually a hydro vacuum which leads to extremely high rotational speeds in the core. This is why the HK cyclones feature an excellent parting cut. The separated solids of the cyclone underflow are discharged to a dewatering screen machine which reduces the liquid contents and discharges to the belt conveyor. The downstream fine cyclones work on the same principle. The smaller diameter and the higher feed pressure bring about a higher rotational speed which produces an even finer parting cut. As in the previous stage, a dewatering screen reduces the water content of the separated material before the material is discharged onto the belt conveyors. 
After the fine cyclone stage, the separation process is almost completed. The remaining suspension solids are smaller than 35 micrometers. If these remaining solids were not removed, the density of the slurry medium would drastically increase inside a short time, depending on the component density. The increased viscosity would lead to an increased wear on pumps, pipelines, and fittings. The increased slurry density also causes the consumption of electrical energy to rise proportionally, the yellow curve. The decreasing absorbing capacity of the mediums bring about a drastic reduction of the advance speed, the red curve. The TBM can load less material on the medium, which is already preloaded with solids. This can be compared with a nearly full belt conveyor, which has hardly any spare carrying capacity left. Particles of less than 30 micrometers are removed with so-called decanter centrifuges. The finest particles are continuously extracted almost completely from the bentonite from the sedimentation tank. The key principle of a centrifuge is the sedimentation of solids inside a rotating bowl. High-speed rotation allows for a high acceleration of the solids. Sediments are transported to belt conveyors via a screw conveyor. The liquid phase leaves the cylinder via adjustable weir plates. This provides an optimum separation of liquid phase and solid phase. Additional chemical flocculants must be employed to remove particles of less than 5 micrometers. All dewatered solids conveyed out of the slurry treatment and centrifuge plant can be transported to a dump via belt conveyors, where they are loaded on excavators and standard trucks. Special transportation vehicles are not required. Due to the size of the system components, the mechanized excavation of road tunnels or metro lines in urban areas obviously has massive impacts on above-ground infrastructure. Due to space conditions and high prices for real estate, the space required for such a plant should be kept to a minimum. HK separation plants and ancillary equipment, which has been adapted over many years, are ideal to be operated even under extreme space conditions. Despite these space parameters, separation plant engineering should always focus on maximum TBM performance. A network comprising 49 subsidiaries, branch offices, and affiliated companies provides worldwide support and service, every time and everywhere.